Hello there folks, my name is Great Mighty Poe, and welcome to the Elden Ring Report tutorial. Today's tutorial will cover the Gilded Cave of Knowledge. So the Gilded Cave of Knowledge was added in the most recent Elden Ring for Reforged update. It is a brand new tutorial to explain a lot of the core details of the mod, and it's pretty cool, but some people are having some minor issues with certain aspects of it, so I figured I'd make a small tutorial explaining how to complete this tutorial. So the first thing is back in the Chapel of Anticipation, I don't have footage of it unfortunately, there would have been one of these glowing orange messages on the floor. Um, this here is a hint message. So, Elder Ring Reforged makes various changes to core progression and game mechanics. Keep a lookout for orange glowing messages out in the world for hints when it comes to new content or changes. Hint messages are enabled by default. They can be toggled on or off in the Reforged settings menu at Sites of Grace. Awesome. So if you analyze the orange message in the Chapel of Anticipation at the very start, you'll get this little tutorial message and you can just read it in your inventory here at any time. Awesome. Oh, a little bit of lag there. Uh, face the challenges of the Gilded Cave of Knowledge. Lovely. I'll talk to this Crucible Knight here. Brave Tarnish, take the plunge of learning and remembrance. Recall the arts of war and your warrior's blood. So this dude is obviously replacing the normal dude that's here, but he's pretty cool. And you're gonna you're gonna see a few more dudes like this later in the tutorial, so I hope you're ready for them. Awesome. So we're gonna start getting some vanilla tutorials popping up on the side. If you know the basic vanilla controls, you can mostly just ignore them. Any really important tutorials will pop out dead in the middle of your screen and yell at you. So enable tutorials to receive new tutorial messages and important gameplay information. So, at the very, very start, and the Chapel of Anticipation would have been the first message you ever saw. If you've ignored it up to this point, then I will stress it again. So go to System, go to Sound and Display, and make sure Show Tutorials is on. There's a lot of important information that needs to be relayed to the player, otherwise you will be rather confused about certain mechanics. So make sure that's on. Awesome. And for other tutorials can be disabled in the new settings menu at Sites of Grace. So there's a vanilla tutorial popping up for us right now. So this has got the most key bit of information at the bottom there, which is they can be accessed in your inventory at any time. So if you do want to check the tutorials at any point, you can go into your inventory. A lot of people don't know that, but all the Unring Reforged tutorials do end up being put in there. Lovely. So we're just going to set the side of grace and we're just going to turn off vanilla tutorials, so I don't have to talk about those too, too much. Uh, there will be some that will pop up, but you don't need to... They are for specific situations where they are needed. So we're just going to turn off another tutorials. And there we go. Cool. I'm not going to try and explain all the stuff in those menus because it would take far too long. Right. So first things first. We get a broken straight sword. So each hand can be equipped with three armaments. like to talk between them. Armaments can be two-handed, making attacks more difficult to repel with shields and blocking attack and boosting attack power by around 10%. So one thing to know, if you are someone who is used to using strength builds in vanilla, in vanilla you got a 1.5 times scaling modifier um, on strength scaling. With two-handing, that's no longer the case in Elden Ring Reforged. So in vanilla, if you had 66 strength, it would be the equivalent of 99 if two-handing. That's not the case. But you do get a small attack power boost of about 10% with every single weapon now, which I think is a lot better, a lot more fair to every single playstyle. So yeah. So, welcome to the Gilded Cave of Knowledge. Various gameplay concepts of Elden Ring Reforged will be introduced here. It is assumed that you are experienced with basic features of the original game, so ideally you would have played vanilla first, but some people don't, so this will try and explain the basic stuff a little bit, but won't go into much detail as vanilla would, so yeah. Follow the instructions of the imp statues along your path in order to master the gauntlet and claim your just rewards. Lovely. So defeat the Guardian of Knowledge to proceed. So, we got that broken straight sword. It is a very terrible weapon, but it is just so you have a weapon if you don't have one, if you've discarded it. And it can be used to defeat these guys, because they are very, very weak. But, obviously, I started the Vagabond, so I have other weapons, so this is... Very simple. Yeah, you can just mash away at him and kill him, he's not going to fight back. Lovely. So this next bit here, we're going to pillage these remains. I'm just going to go into item crafting. If you have a crafting kit, you can make various items from materials you find. Select item crafting on the main menu to make items. First turn into raw ingredients into intermediate materials, then use those to craft the items. You learn to craft more items by finding cookbooks. 
So we've got a cracked pot and the crafting kit, so no longer from Kale, it is obtained here. And it is needed for this next little thing. So make sure you grab these materials along the way. So in every corner of the you'll find fruits and flowers, mushrooms, butterflies, and various other useful materials. These things can be dis distilled into alchemics, essences, and an amalgams in the crafting menu. Those distillations can then be used for item crafting. So a couple of raw fruit here, you're going to want to pick those up. There we go. And we'll examine the M statue to find out what we actually need to do here. So, Gilded Cave of Knowledge, Item Crafting. So, when crafting, items can now be made in from a wider selection of raw materials than before. For example, crafting a fire pot needs a source of common alchemic and a source of blazing substance. These are plentiful in the world. The various plants and butterflies scattered in this room may be used to craft fire pots in order to proceed. So, burn the Guardian of Knowledge with flame to proceed. It's very vague with that, but it wants you to make a fire pot. So, so there's already butterflies there, there's some mushrooms here. He's not going to attack you, don't worry. Let's pick up the butterflies here. There's some mushrooms here. Awesome. So if we go into our crafting menu, you can see how this works. So both the raw fruits and the mushrooms can be made to the essential alchemics, and the blazing substance can be made from those butterflies. Um, you can also see that you can make the raw raisins from the raw fruits, um, but we don't need to make those. But we can just see that the fire pot here is going to take 10 essential alchemic and or blazing substance. So if we take these two, we're going to get eight essential, and then just one of our raw fruits, they'll get us ten we need. So you unlock another recipe. More recipes will show up as you obtain various resources, so they don't all clog inventory at once. Um, so you can take essentials and turn them into ingenious for higher tier stuff. Um, we can take our thorny butterflies and craft those into the small ring, and then we can take our essential and blazing and make it into a fire pot. Lovely. And then we can just equip that. And lock off this boy and through the problem. Go, it's crafting. Lovely. And we're going to head into the next room. And this room is probably my favourite room. You'll find out why in a second. Also, more raw fruit to pick up. Pick up all the materials you can. You might need them. Cool. So, this one is Gilded Cave of Knowledge Rune Pieces. Rune pieces are a type of collectible which can be found all around the world. They're usually hidden from plain sight and require some exploration to discover. In New Game Plus Journeys, rune pieces are also available by defeating bosses and by defeating runes you have once you have reached level 200. So level 200 is the level cap for New Game. Um, a lot of people find it a bit controversial that you can't over level, but trust me at level 200 you'll be able to fight everything in the mod just fine, even on the really hard difficulties. So level 200, level cap. But there are ways to get past that, mainly with these rune pieces. So finding 20 rune pieces in the world unlocks the rune forging system at Finger Reader Enia in the Round Table Hold. It doesn't mention that you need to have a activated great rune as well to be able to actually purchase the binding runes, and obviously you need to have defeated a sharp bearer in order to actually access Enia. Um, if you're a new game plus, Enia is unlocked from the start, so you don't need to worry about that. But you still need to get the activated great runes. I believe, at least. So find three hidden rune pieces to proceed. So yeah, these will be all over the world, and this is sort of to explain sort of the place where they can be. So there's one here by this rock. There's a trace and a rune piece. So in New Game Plus, you only get the rune pieces um, from the purchasing and the bosses. You only get the runic traces from finding them around the world. So yeah, uh, there's another one in a bush over here. And then another place that are commonly hidden is in breakables. So, roll through everything. Lovely. So they are all over the world. There's over a thousand of them out in the world. So, good luck finding them. There's some pretty well hidden spots. Next challenge. So, restoring FP. Most FP costs have been increased. In return, FP can be restored in many ways. Creating an ebb and flow system of spending and generating. Upon a successful weapon attack, a small amount of FP will be restored. Seals and staffs have special ranged heavy attacks which do this especially well. Spellcasters can also use generator spells, marked by the blue teardrop on the scroll. These spells will restore FP upon hitting enemies. So lots of ways to get FP back, so you don't have to rely just on Cerulean Flask, which is really nice. We'll restore your FP by attacking the Guardian Knowledge to proceed. You can see uh, our FP has been drained and we just need to whack away at this guy to get our FP back, which will take a bit. 
So let's actually go the broken straight sword. I think it might be slightly faster. There we go. Doesn't need to restore your full health FP bar, but just need to make sure that you understand it. So just attack and attack and attack. Okay, switch back to our longsword. I don't think I need to do that, but. Oh, and this lag spike here that I'm experiencing, this is a normal lag spike in this area. It's to be expected. It'll happen to you as well. Don't worry about it. Stance breaking. So reducing the enemy's poison arrow causes their stance to break, enabling a critical hit. Stance breaking helps you keep an upper hand in combat by giving you time to recuperate or deliver more damage. Beware of the increased stamina cost of heavy jump attacks. So in vanilla, the most common attack you will do for stance breaks is jump R2s. Jump R2s all day long. They are now much, much more stamina expensive, so they are a bit more limited in how much you can do them. But you can still do jump R1s, you can do charge R2s, you can do deflex into guard counters. There's lots of different ways to stance break enemies. And yeah, just jump R2s, a bit more expensive, but there's still plenty of ways. So stance break and repost the guardians of knowledge to proceed. So there's three dudes in here. So strong attack. And there we go. And jump heavy to him. Oh, and I did one extra out of one. But you can get them with normal out of ones, as per normal. Just so I show off a few different options there. These boys don't attack you. Awesome. And so, before I actually go over there, over here. If you were paying attention to the room piece thing before, come over here. Another room piece for you to find. Lovely. Make sure you grab that. As I said, you need to find 20 for each binding room, so you're going to want a lot of them. Because those binding rooms can be very, very good. Uh, they can range from stat increases, to movement speed increases, to stamina increases, health increases, all sorts of cool stuff. Which is really, really nice. Awesome. So let's talk to this lovely lady. The cave, beset by plunderers, coveting the gold, blind to knowledge. They'll serve for eternity, those wretches. But for you, perhaps another fate awaits. If you know how to grasp it, that is. So we get the Oracle Effigy, and an Oracle's Remedy. And this is going to give us the information on fortunes. So with the Oracle's Effigy, you may define... De uh, define a new fortune at a site of grace, and change your active fortune. Fortune serves as character specializations and grant beneficial effects, which may only be, which may also be accompanied by certain trade-offs. Only one fortune can be active at a time. Dividing a common fortune will consume an oracle's remedy, which can be purchased from nomadic merchants. Special fortunes may be discovered in the world. Awesome. So another side of grace here, which we're going to need to use. Because this is the Guild of Cabin Knowledge Fortunes. The Thangarita Crow in this area may not welcome the other intruders, but will share the gift of fortunes with you. Once you receive the Oracle's Effigy from the Thangarita Crone, but the instructions will be given. Should you anger her, you can return her by resting at the side of Grace. Keep in mind that the Sorology you've seen are added to your inventory for later reading. So, it wants you to define and select a fortune to proceed. So, once again, it mentioned, you know, Come here and you can read all the tutorials that you want. So, rest of the side of Grace. And if you go to the fortunes, define new fortune, and you have a you have a few options. So these are all the common ones, and they have a variety of different effects or a variety of different builds. So barbarian, obviously, you know. Well, actually, I'm not going to explain what each one does, but you can sort of see based on just sort of how they work, they have a couple of positives, a core central theme to the fortune, and then a couple of negatives. Um, I'm going to look at the fortune of the Paladin, because it's one I know very well. So you can see this one gives you elemental defense, equip load, and damage for incantations. Um, it also gives you blocking effectiveness, wielding a shield. If you block attacks or take damage, you get FP. 
when you're under half health, you get healing, and you get cast speed and less FP cost on incantations. But you do get reduced movement speed in combat, less arcane, and worse stamina recovery. These all sound really bad, and you might not like all those positives, but the thing to understand with fortunes is they are never as bad as they seem. A lot of players, myself included, would go for the fortune of the commoner, because it gives you good stuff, with no downsides, but this one does practically nothing. And these negatives on the Fortune of the Paladin aren't nearly as bad as they seem. I use this one quite a lot. That move for speed in combat, barely noticeable. The decreased arcane, it decreases it by 5, so there are ways to get that back. And the stand recovery, you can get past that with the Green Turtle Talisman. So all of the negatives, they can be dealt with. And you might not like every positive, like I don't use shields for example, but there's other effects that are there are really good. It's not all or nothing with fortunes. You may only like a couple of effects. Downsides may not be the best, but they can really help you build a lot. Um, the common ones are a lot more forgiving with deviating from their specific playstyles. The rare and legendary ones really want to reinforce those particular playstyles, so their negatives are a lot more harsh. But they're not that harsh. I have to really stress that. They're not that harsh. They really reward you for going for that specific playstyle, but they're never that harsh. So I'm going to go Fortune of the Paladin because I really like it. Lovely. Then I change my Fortune, Clone Fortunes, and Fortune of the Paladin. Lovely. And that's all we need to do for that one. Lovely. Let's keep moving. So this one is stealth. So stealth can be a good way to start a fight with large groups of enemies on your terms. Breaking line of sight to enemies and moving through tall foliage or crouch improves your stealth. Hits on unaware enemies deal more damage. Enemies may also be distracted by noises such as the impact of thrown projectiles. So sneak past the guardian's knowledge to undetected to proceed. So just get into the bushes and crouching. Crouch will make it harder for enemies to discover you, especially effective in tall glass. Tall glass? Tall grass. Attacking enemy that hasn't noticed you will cause more damage than usual. So, we need to be undetected, so I'm not going to attack the enemies. I'm just going to keep an eye on where they're looking. So he's going to wander over that way. And I'm going to wander over this way. And wait for this boy to turn around. And I'm going to head over to the grass over here. Lovely! And I'm going to wait for him to turn around again. I really don't want him to notice me. Now, mate, turn around. Lovely. Awesome. And now we're through to the next bit. There we go. Lovely. Deflex. Now, this is a very, very cool system. At the moment you guard with your weapon or shield, you briefly enter the deflect timing window, greatly improving your defenses with any type of weapon. Exceptionally well-timed deflex become perfect deflex, granting even further defensive benefits, negating all stats build-up, and briefly empowering your next attack. The deflect window can be tracked in your character's status icons. Successful deflex create a more powerful sparking effect and sound. Awesome. So, perfect deflect and guard counter the guardian of knowledge attacks to proceed. So, the way to understand deflex is they are essentially a perfect block. It's not like Sekiro deflection, it is just a perfect block. But if you have a look at my... Oh, okay. Get away from that. If I have a look at my hotbar, you can see a couple of icons flashing under there. So you can see sort of that one with the twos. That's a perfect. And if I hold it for a little bit longer, you can see it turns into the blue one. That is a just a normal deflect. So at this point, you need to get a perfect deflect. So time it precisely. And then guard counter. Um, you can do this with a shield. You can do this just by two-handing your weapon. If you're power stancing, there's an option inside of Grace to make your left-handed attacks block instead and your R1s become power stance attacks, which is really useful. Um, and then guard counter is just on an R2. So, yeah. So guarding, use an armament in your left hand or both hands to guard against incoming attacks. Guarding is pretty effective when done with a shield. Guarding shoots stamina. If stamina runs out, your stance will be broken. So... You can do this, you can deflect with weapons, perfect deflex don't consume stamina. Um, but if you want a little bit of safety net, shields are a much better option to use. And this is a soldier at Godric. So guard counters, you roll a counter attack immediately after blocking an enemy attack. 
Guard counters make it easy to break an enemy stance. Right trigger immediately after blocking an attack. Guard counter. So you can see that was not a perfect one. That's not perfect. That was perfect. That wasn't. So the perfect is a lot more noticeable in terms of the visual it gives you. And you need to deflect with the perfect. If you deflect without the perfect, which he seems to be wanting to back away from me, it's going to do no damage. So wait until you get those perfects and retaliate. Awesome. Nice and simple. Lovely. And now we have the one on Stakes America. So upon dying, you'll be revived at the last side of Grace that you visited. However, if there was Stakes America near where you died, choose to revive there instead. Lovely. So now we're going to head into probably what is considered the hardest part of the tutorial. This is the dodge tutorial, I guess. This will introduce four different ways of avoiding attacks with a boss fight. Um, do note with how this is set up, it does appear like all the fights in the ERR may be like this, like, oh, you have to do things specifically. It is just for this boss. How you dodge stuff out in the world against other bosses is entirely up to you. This is just trying to reinforce that you have these options. So you have to dodge things in a very specific way. It can be a little bit annoying for a lot of players, but it's not as bad as it seems. So, yeah, let's head into here. This is a very, very cool looking arena. So these are the Knights of the First Lord, so avoiding enemy attacks, jumping. Some enemy attacks, such as low sweeps or ground stomps, are best avoided by performing a jump. Jumping grants full immunity to certain ground attacks and makes it easy to avoid low attacks. In real combat, jumping can be followed up by a light jump attack or a heavy jump attack to maintain aggression while avoiding damage. So you push A to jump. This boy's gonna run up to us. And he's gonna stop. And we need to jump. That's gonna do damage. Now I'm gonna let him hit me with the next attack, and it's gonna fully heal him. So if you do want to practice a lot with these first ones, you can do that. Just let them hit you. It does no, it does no damage to you. You just need to do it four times for each of them. There we go. There's the first one down. Lovely. So this one is for ducking. So certain enemy attacks are raised high enough to the ground to allow ducking underneath them. Ducking fully replaces the backstep action, significantly lowering your stature while remaining in place. In real combat, ducking allows you to follow up with a highly nimble light attack that propels you forward. So you just push B to duck. So this is the attack some people have trouble with because they want to try and dodge it, but just stand still and just push B. And I'm just going to run, but you can stop very suddenly to do it. There we go. Lovely. Next one. So avoiding enemy attacks, moving. Some enemy attacks track your movements poorly and the enemy may have trouble keeping up with simple movement. In such situations, it is recommended to step aside or circle straight for the target to remain safe. This leaves you free to swiftly follow up with any desired action and to gain upper hand in combat. So this boy's attack is going to be a spin, so you just walk around him. And it's going to miss you entirely. Just walk around it, and it's going to miss you entirely. I'm going to give it a distance just so he comes back in the middle. There we go. Just walk around him. Nice and simple. There we go. Next one. What are you me attacks? Dodging. When unsure what dodge on offers the most advantage, a classic dodge is usually a good option. Dodging offers a generous invulnerability period, which depends strongly on your equipment load. Sorry, I had to take a drink there. <laughs> Out of all the options, this consumes the most stamina. Skill combat consists of using all available options to their utmost benefit. So if you know what to do, this is a good fallback option, but remember, you do have other options. So this boy tends to throw people off as well because of how he does his attacks. So it looks like he's going to do a stomp. And then he doesn't. And the timing can be very, very tight on this dodge. So you've got to really wait until he starts that swing and then dodge. There we 
go. Lovely. And now, we get the true boss. Crucible Knight, Ryakus. So avoiding enemy attacks, the last trial. So jump to avoid grounded or low attacks, duck to avoid high attacks and sweeps, move to circle around slow rigid attacks, and dodge to avoid other attacks. So this boy is going to do those four attacks we just saw, and we need to defeat him using those. He has a lot more health, and you can only do it with those four specific... He can, eh, sorry. You have to avoid those four specific attacks in the correct way to do damage. Uh, below 50% health, he will get some regen, so need to really keep up with it. Uh, don't worry too, too much if you are struggling with it. This is just to teach you. Uh, it can be frustrating, but it is just to try and help you recognize these types of attacks out in the field against other enemies. You don't need to do this against Crucible Knights in the future if you don't want to. It is just for this boy. I need to stress that as much as possible because a lot of people get frustrated by this. I think ERR is going to be like this for every boss. It's just for this boy. So, I didn't walk around fast enough, so I got clipped by it. Jump the stomp. Duck the stab. Walk around that. Jump that. Dodge that. Jump that. Walk around that. Really keep your finger off the stick, by the way. I know it's I know it's a lot of people's attention to want to move constantly when they're fighting stuff. I do it as well, but for this boy since you need to duck, it's good habit to just not. <laughs> Lovely. And there we go. Nice and simple. Strength and a smithing stone, one. Um, so it takes about 20 perfectly dodged attacks to take him down, and you have enough health to take about 10 hits, I think it is. Uh, each attack from him does 0.9% of your total health uh, for every single character. So no matter what class you start with, it'll, you know, chip down the same amount each time, giving you plenty of chances to do it. And obviously Snake America are outside the door, so plenty of chance to get through that and then out here there is the brave set that is your reward for this it is a cut armor set from vanilla and the most important reward is back here another rune piece awesome so that has been the tutorial and one thing I didn't mention if you didn't want to go through that tutorial you got stuck on that boss you do have the um, French Rock Hero's Grave, so the grace beyond the doors there, unlocked to Far Shell 2 if you didn't want to do it. But yeah, this has been a rather long video, been half an hour of this, I'll make sure to split it up into various timestamps to help people out as much as I can, and yeah, um, I hope you have fun with the mod, and I hope this helps you out. Uh, one other thing I'll mention that you've unlocked as well, as part of this tutorial, you will have unlocked the hard difficulties, uh, so if you want to play on a hard difficulty for ERR, that's how you get them on now. Awesome. So yeah, once again, thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoy the mod, and I'll see you some other time. Take care guys, have a good one.